Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm presenting our work, Distribution of Reinforcement Learning via Volume Matching, a joint work with my collaborator, uh, Sunil Gupta and Sveta Van Gadech. So a reinforcement learning agent learns interactively from the feedbacks of the environment. So the goal is to learn how to make a good decision from the rewards without any supervision. Um, so, so reinforcement learning is one of the most active areas of research in machine learning with many important practical settings. Uh, it has vast real life application from robotics, diagnosis, and cell driving car to material discovery. And however, there are many real life challenges in reinforcement learning. And today in our work, we focus on how to learn uh, a robust and informative representation for reinforcement learning with empirical data. Okay, so a typical algorithm for deep reinforcement learning is deep Q learning proposed in 2015. This represents the value function by a deep neural networks to so generalize across large and complex space. Mm. One of the challenges of deep reinforcement learning is that the rewards in practice uh, might be sparse, complex, or multimodal, and the agent's uh, reference can be complicated in practice. And the learning is performed with weak signals via bootstrapping or unsupervised manner. So that's why learning a robust informatic representation is crucial set. However, the expected reinforcement learning ignore the valuable function of the intrinsic randomness at the at the return. So, so there's another approach in the reinforcement learning which is called distributional reinforcement, which try to predict the entire probability distribution of the rewards. And uh, it provides significant you know, empirical improvement over the, the, the traditional reinforcement learning. And also a recent study in Nature to test that uh, the brain reward system actually used distributional reinforcement learning. Uh, there are many uh, important algorithms in distributional reinforcement learning. The basic one is C51, QRDQN, and the ones with advanced modeling improvements include IQN and FQF. But all these methods built upon the same principle, the so-called predefined set of principle. And this is restricted in presentation and difficult in maintaining redefined statistics. And in this work, we propose a new perspective to distributional RL using the idea from the statistical hypothesis testing and the consensus student samples. And we successfully uh, avoid the predefined statistics principle and we, pro uh, we provide a new theoretical understanding of distributional RL and also. Uh, our, uh, our perspective leads to a scalable algorithm that can easily build up on the existing deep neural network architect. And so as a result, uh, our algorithm is requiring no more statistic constraint, no more explicit projection as compared to the literature. And here's uh, our, uh, our talk. So we, we will uh, give the uh, technical background in reinforcement in distribution or RL, and then we Pretty describe the, the, the prior methods in which you know RL and then our framework and some discussion. So the interaction model in reinforcement learning is uh, described uh, through the Markov decision process MPP. So we have the state space X, action space A, transition kernel B, reward distribution R, and reward domain X. So interaction is, is as follows. So every, uh, every time step, so the action is uh, it's drawn from the policy pi and it's received a reward r, and then the, the system will, will move the, the, the agent to a new, new state according to the transition kernel b. Uh, and the core of reinforcement learning is about basement dynamic programming, which is uh, so here we have the, the random return, which is basically check the random discounted sum of rewards, and the randomness in this. Return comes from three sources. First is from policy pi, second is from transition to P, and the third source is uh, from reward measure R. And a classical Bellman's dynamic programming learns the expected return, which is the value function Q, which is the expectation of Z pi. Uh, okay. Uh, so, 
So we have the Bellman's equation to describe the t pi, and q pi is a fixed point of t pi. We have the op, uh, optimality Bellman equation t, and uh, the optimal value q star is the fixed point of t. And the goal is to find q star in, in q learning. And a typical algorithm for deep reinforcement learning is deep Q learning. So it, it represents the, the, the value function by, by a, a deep neural network. And then it's training uh, the Q function by bootstrapping the Bellman target. And the, the last function here is uh, basically the, uh, the temporal difference loss, the TD loss function. And then it's given another advance, like uh, you target network to stabilize the update and you mem memory buffer to meet, limit the IIG setting. So what is distribution or uh, informally is learn the entire distribution of the, of the return. So it's learn the intrinsic randomness of the return. And why distribution or RL is uh, we can take a, a self-supervised learning perspective. So in general, self-supervised learning principle uh, uh, try to encode a high-level physical object. We set up the learning task of construct different parts of the object. But here in distribution of RL, uh, we construct a set of learning for low-level abstract object, which is probability in nature. Uh, at the core distribution of RL, uh, mathematically, so we have the distribution of Bellman operators, which uh, transform one return distribution to another via the Bellman dynamic. And the fixed point of the distribution of Bellman operator is mu pi, which is uh, the return distribution induced by policy pi. And the goal here in distribution of RL is to learn the fixed point of the distribution of Bellman operator. So it sets up learning the value function, the fixed point of the, 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 the Bellman op operator here, we learn the return distribution of the or the distribution of Bellman operator. Uh, here are some famous algorithms in distribution of RL. So the first one is categorical distribution of RL, CTLR. Uh, the idea is to approximate the return distribution mu by a categorical distribution of F, which is a, um, a categorical distribution with learnable probability. And with, with fist, uh, suppose z1 to zn and half mu is, uh, uh, theoretically half mu is a projection of mu onto the sets of category distribution with respect to your grammar distance. And see if it's one is uh, the instance, famous instance of CDRL with the, with the magic number n equal to 51. And the second one is, uh, quantum regression distribution or LQR DLR. So the idea is to approximate a return distribution mu by a mixture of direct. Uh, here, the, the particle theta are learnable. Uh, theoretically, uh, mu hat is the projection of mu on the set of mixture of direct with respect to uh, one water sand distance. And in fact, it can sort analytically by the theta equal to the quantile values as the specific quantile uh, 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 switch from time through the distribution mu. And QRDQN1 is the famous instance of QRDQL, which is the last is the famous and successful algorithm in practice. And besides that, there are some other modeling improvements to distribution of RL. The first one is implicit quantile network, IQN, which generate the quantile values by uh, the neural network transformation of the base distribution. Uh, this implicit model is similar to the way that GAN generates samples. The second models are fully parameterized quantile function FQF, built up on IQN, and it's first the optimal location of base samples in IQN. Uh, okay, so uh, that's why having many different distribution or reinforcement learning methods. They are all share the same principle. They learn a finite set of predefined statistics. So a statistics is officially a functional from distributional, uh, functional from space of distribution to a scale of values. For example, mean and medium of the distribution is a statistic. So QRDQN learns a set of n statistics of a distribution mu 
which is the quantile values at n specific quantiles. And CDRL learns a set of n minus one statistics of the distribution mu, which is the expectation of some uh, piecewise linear function. We show that. Uh, predefined statistics principle suffer two limitations in practice. First is a statistic representation, and second is difficulty in maintaining the predefined statistic. For example, CDR associate the budget and statistic to and fit supports like QRDRL uh, QRD associate to and fixed quantize. Uh, and CDRL require a highly involved projection. QRDRL require order statistics. In practice, uh, QRDRL fails to maintain the order statistics. The goal is e set. We propose that the statistics should be freely learned into any functional form. We free up all of the difficulties to reduce the learning burden. Uh, so a solution to this theme change is that we propose a predefined statistic. So uh, redefine, sorry, redefine unrestricted resistance statistic, which is basically pseudo sample is of the distribution. So unrestricted statistic do not surprise to any redefined functional form. Um, so that's why it, it doesn't require any statistics constraints as in the, the previous methods. Uh, the idea is that so each distribution L, uh, each distribution mu, is represented by a set of pseudo samples. And the pseudo samples, it's not, it's not predefined statistic, it's unrestricted statistic. Pseudo samples are deterministically involved such that they pass a statistical hypothesis test between mu and its distribution of element target, C by mu. And to realize this, we use the, dis the, the dis uh, maximum mean discrepancy, NMD. So it basically it measures the distance between two distributions and it has empirical approximation, which is easily computed in practice and it's available to so category in the same. Uh, the idea of algorithm is that uh, given a sample transition as ARS as prime, plus we can we compute a set of n pseudo sample of mu, and then we compute a set of uh, n uh, Bellman target particle T hat Z, Z I, and then we match the moments of these two pseudo sample set together by minimizing with respect to the theta the empirical MMT distance. Uh, so our algorithm can be easily extended to DQN like architecture to create a novel deep reinforcement learning. So basically, we just use the architect. Uh, similar to DQN with the output of n time a element to predict the uh, n pseudo samples for, for its return distribution. Uh, there are some theoretical guarantees for our framework. The first is about the metric property. We work with sub supremum MMD. Uh, so M, the infimum MMD, the supremum MMD induced metric when the underlying kernel is characteristic, for example, Gaussian kernels, or when it's uh, unrectified kernels, or it's, in, it's expo exponential product kernels. So it's a vast number of kernels that can guarantee the, 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 the metric property. So when, when the, the distribution of the main operator is construction with respect to the infimum MMT, uh, the answer is it's construction when the underlying kernel is both cheap invariant and scale sensitive. It's also construction when the kernel is any positive weighted linear combination of chip invariant and, and scale sensitive. Unfortunately, it's not a construction when K is Gaussian kernel. But in, pra in practice, Gaussian kernels can actually promote to match the moments between two distributions quite, uh, quite well. And it actually has better empirical performance as compared to the other kernels like analyzed in this section. Uh, and then we, uh, there's guarantee in the conversion rate in the distribution approximation. So the particle, the zero particle can construct the empirical distribution, which is approached to the 
true distribution P at the rate of 1 over square root of N. And this rate can be further improved to 1 over N using kernel Hurling technique proof. So here come to our experiments. The first experiment as a tabular policy evaluation with the goal is that we, we empirically evaluate that MMTKN with Gaussian kernels can approximate policy uh, return distribution well. And the target to learn the optimal policy return distribution in a classical environment here. Okay. Uh, so here's the result. Uh, in, in the figure here, uh, the, the dark the dark line is the crowd two, and um, the blue line is an MMT, uh, our proposed method to Gaussian kernel. And uh, K here denotes uh, the moment of the return distribution. So K equal to one means uh, the expectation of a return distribution. So uh, uh, we can see that all the methods approximate the expectation uh, quite well, but the approximation quality Deeper gracefully when it comes to higher order moments. So QRDRL would un and unrectified MMTDRL suffer from under approximation, but Gaussian MMTDRL with only uh, touchy particle can uh, approximate higher order moments very well in this experiment. Now we move to the large, large scale experiments with artery games. The goal is to demonstrate the effectiveness and the scalability of our algorithm. Uh, so in this experiment, uh, we use a very simple architecture. MMTQN has the same architecture as its counterpart, QRDQN1. And the baselines are uh, categorized into two groups. The first group we call, we call a comparable group with TQN C51 QRDQN1. The second group we call our reference group consists of representative methods with algorithmic and modeling improvements uh, orthogonal to MMTQN. Uh, uh, consists of rainbow, IQN, and FQF. So here is the main result on table one. Uh, you can see from that the MMTQN significantly uh, outperforms the comparable methods, though it shares exact, the, the same basic network architecture with C51 and QRDQN1. Uh, but MTQN performs comparably with the reference methods like Rainbow, IQN, ACAD, even though uh, our methods did not include any orthogonal algorithmic and monolithic improvements for the second group. And MTQN even established the state of the art, mean human normalized core uh, in this experiment. So here we give another, like, uh, uh, experimental result to measure the score improvement of MMTQN over the QRDQN1 uh, in each artery game. So, so it's, it's measure how how improvement is made in our algorithm per game in the artery. So MMTQN offers significant gains over a large array of artery games. For more experimental result, we, we, we take a look at our paper. All right, so conclusion, we have introduced uh, a novel approach to digital RL that can avoid the predefined census principle. The key technical or key of our methods is that it's deterministically evolved a set of student samples of return distribution to match the moments up to distribution. We have provided new theoretical understanding of digital RL. We provide a new scalable algorithm with strong empirical gains. Uh, discussion. There's some 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 ways to improve the performance further in our uh, framework. First is the automatic kernel selection. Uh, currently, we use fixed kernel for MQN, but uh, we can use the uh, adversarial adversarial kernel to provide stronger signal for the training. We we can include modeling improvements to MMTQN using the implicit generated network from IQN or using the proposal network from FQF. Uh, so there's an open question about the necessary condition for the construction. So whether scalability, scale sensitive and ship invariant kernel is necessary for the construction of distribution of element target. And we can extend this book to robust our policy estimation instrument RL. Uh, thank you for your listening. I'm happy to take any questions.